What's up guys, back with a new video and this time we're gonna be addressing complexity levels and what it means for your landing page. I prepared a little presentation here, I'm just gonna run you through it so you can understand how you can use that to your advantage. First of all, we need to understand why is complexity level even important? What does it even mean? Uh, probably a lot of you guys have never even heard about it before when you've done your landing pages. But actually it makes a lot of sense and we have found out through about a thousand landing pages we've done that content matching and complexity is really, really important. And if you understand how to do this, you can significantly increase your conversion rate throughout your funnels and by using landing pages. So first of all, and by the way, guys, these graphics are all like horseshit, but I'm just doing this quickly so you can understand what it is you need to understand and just all the fluff is just not here, right? So you look at this chart, you see complexity, risk, and effort on, on one ax, and then you see information and the sales cycle, right? So what it really means is that the higher the complexity, risk, effort, the more information you will need to give to the customer before they trust you enough to buy the product. Uh, that also means the sales cycle tends to be longer. And we can all understand that, right? So let me just go to the next sli slide here. Um, you know, you buy a car, you buy insurance or house, obviously you're not just gonna buy from a Facebook ad, right? You're gonna take your time, you're gonna research, you're gonna look through different things. And on the other hand, you know, if you want a candy bar, you're not gonna really think about it twice, you're just gonna buy it, right? Uh, the same thing for paper, towel, gum. These are not all things you buy online, but the effort and complexity is extremely low. So if you need it, you just buy it. You don't necessarily go out and research anything, right? Um, there are six questions that we have found extremely helpful to ask yourself to understand um, the complexity level for your product. If you ask yourself these questions and answer and rate your, your brand, your product, your service, you are actually gonna be able to find the right path for you, to create the right funnel for you, and pick the right landing page, so it all makes sense. And the first one is how familiar is your target audience with your product or service? Are they likely to be experts and new in the area? So, you know, if you were thinking about electric cars when they came out and nobody knew how to even charge an electric car. So that would be, you know, 60 out of 60 on complexity score. It would be really difficult because you wouldn't even know how to actually operate the car. And on the other hand, if you take something like toothpaste, it's not like it needs to come with a manual, right? So that would be extremely low complexity. And that is important that you rate yourself, rate your product honestly in this area. Uh, maybe even get other people to, not just yourself, but ask friends and family to rate your product in this area. How many features and functions does a product have? Super straightforward. The more complex it is, the more time it will take to learn, which means you need to invest and put more effort into it. Um, does the product require any special skills or knowledge to use, for example, technical expertise? Uh, so that would be certain products you buy at, you know, um, if you need to buy, let's just say, a house, right? You might need to have technical skills to understand the interest rate, the mortgage, and all the extra things that comes with buying a house. So that would need, you would actually need some technical skills for that. Um, how much customization on configuration do we need to use the product uh, effectively? Uh, this is also interesting because sometimes we buy tools for the kitchen, for example, and it comes with this huge amount of gadgets and an explanation on how to use them, how to customize it. And sometimes when we buy it and we open it and we see how complex it is, we even have buyer's remorse because we just don't feel like, you know, uh, reading through all this. And I know that's true for myself, you know, I, I don't even like to read the manual. If I have to read a manual, I know I'm not gonna like the product. So that is really important for complexity. And then the last thing is, but this is so, so vital. What are the potential risk or downsides associated with the product? Um, let's just say you buy it and it's a big financial commitment. Maybe you are paying it off over time. Maybe there's a mortgage or maybe the fact that you spend all your money on this product means you have no money left for other things for that particular month. Uh, and that is a huge risk on the financial side. So that's really important that you actually think about that. And obviously there's, you know, environmental concerns and stuff, but I actually want you to focus more on the financial aspect here because that's what really gets people to think differently about the complexity level, the effort and so on. 
here's just a fun example I just wanted to show you for cars. Google actually did a huge study and, sh and found out how long it takes for people on average to buy a car and it takes about three months. Uh, a lot of people, uh, people tend to do 139 searches, which for me sounded insanely high, but they actually have the data, so they must be able to prove that it's true, that you watch about 14 videos. I know I just bought a new car myself that I watched maybe 50 videos, so I think that's even low. You look at pictures, that's for sure true. Uh, and you understand, you probably look at a lot of brands, and I did that myself. I was out in six or seven different dealerships to look at different brands that I, that I thought was really important, uh, really interesting, and then I went down from there. When it comes to complexity, that also changes your ad funnel before the landing page. And this is really important to take into consideration. Uh, if you have a longer sales cycle, you will need to have an awareness campaign, consideration campaign, purchase campaign. But if it's a lower uh, sale or sort of shorter sales cycle, you don't need so many different stages. You can just go straight from awareness to purchase, right? So you wouldn't even have the consideration phase here. So that's just something to keep in mind. So I took all the questions that you saw earlier and now it's time for you to rate your product or service from one to 10 in all areas. And I do recommend that you create a spreadsheet and then you just hand it over to friends and family. And then you explain, let's say in a Loom video or you send them their web, your website and you say, you know my features, you know my product, how would you rate my product uh, from one to 10 in each area? Now, when you get a score, that will help you understand where on the complexity scale you actually, you're, you're actually, um, placed and you can see here i just did some really rough things here from 0 to 30 that's when you have a very direct sales channel and that is where you can get away with going straight to a sales page and you don't need to have all this information people are happy to buy in the moment when you get to 30 plus that's when you really have to think about if you need to have pre-sales and listicles because people are thinking twice about buying your product, they want to understand how it works. They want to understand what alternatives that there might be out there. And then if you are at a high level of a super high complexity and risk that's 40 to 60, then it's required. Like you will not sell much if you just go direct to a sales page. So it's really, really important to consider uh, where you lay here. Um, and we have seen a lot of brands go very wrong. So they'll be super complex, but they'll lose sales page. But more importantly, and this is what we see too much of actually, is that people make their funnel super advanced, super long, when it when actually they will convert better with just a straight up landing page, uh, which a sales page, and don't need like that long funnel. So that's something to, for you to keep in mind as well. Um, Let's keep going to the next slide here because now it gets super, super interesting. So if you have a zero to 30 on the complexity score, you can get away with going with paid social media, direct to sales landing page, and then the tr traditional at the car purchase and so on. Uh, here I'm just including one landing page where you see straight right off the bat, you see an offer that's a sale landing page, super, super simple. Um, and that is when the product is pretty much uh, straightforward and this brand at least um, decided that it makes sense to go straight to the sales page um, I'm not necessarily saying that solo wave are right here but I'm just showing that's that's an example of a sales page right um, by the way where am I getting all these landing pages from I'm getting it from a new resource uh, I'll put a link in the end of this video where you can go but otherwise just go to profile.io and you can find it under free resources go to the type of landing page and then you can actually pick a listicle or a sales page or an advertorial slash pre-sale. So you can find the right landing page and that way you know where to get your inspiration from instead of just starting from scratch. There was, this will really save you a lot of time. Anyway, let's go to you know the more advanced sales cycle. So let's say you're plus 30 or you're, already, or you're almost up at 60, then you always wanna go paid media, obviously, because that's a scalable traffic source then a listicle or a pre-sale advertorial, and then straight to a sales landing page. Um, so you have two steps here, right? And then if you're really high on the complexity score, you might wanna say, I'm gonna send them to a listicle or advertorial, then I'm gonna try to get their email uh, with a pop-up and other things like that. And then I will send them helpful and valuable content, which I will drip over a week or two weeks or three weeks. 
And once I feel like they're warm and we really explain the product and they're engaging, then I'll send them to another landing page with a special promotion and a no-brainer offer. And that's a super good way to sell products that are a bit more expensive, a bit more high, highly complex and stuff like that. Right, so how, what does that look like? So let's say it's a super simple product. It's below 30 in the complexity score. You can go, um, you'd go seven reasons why. So you could have a listicle and then straight to your product page, or you could just go straight to a sales page. Sorry, you don't even need this, right? So you could just go straight to a sales page that, are, that is promoting your product. And if it's a little bit higher, let's say 30 plus, uh, then you could go with a listicle potentially like that and then straight to your sales landing page. You do two different landing pages. You could also go with an advertorial, you know, I'm just showing on it here, um, which is totally different, which is more like an interview style, uh, style um, page. I really like this one. It converts super, super well, and they do millions because of this. So, you know, this is how Joe Rogan gets fired up in all cylinders. That that doesn't have to be a supplement, right? That could also be that his diet is on point and he's eating like high quality meat, right? So for uh, Butcher Box, they could do an advertorial like this and then send it to the sales page. So that's a, re a nice funnel that I like too. Uh, so that that's another really great example. But if it's super, super high complexity, you could also do an advertorial first and then to the sales page or you could do an advertorial and then straight to email capture and then you could drip that content, you know, helpful content that shows why you should consider Butcher, Bot, but, uh, butcher Box and then straight back into the sales landing page, maybe a modified version with an even better offer, right? Which is what we saw up here. Uh, we can show them an advertorial or listicle, capture their email, show them helpful content which will drip and then we'll send them back to a landing page with a nice uh, promotion or sale, right? So that's what we can we can do right here. So that's how you can use complexity levels to actually tailor your landing page, uh, and you will see so much better results if you actually do this. I think no one literally talks about this, but it's so so important. If you want more resources on where to find the right landing page, now that you know your complexity score, you can go in here and again click and then just find if you want a listicle or if you want a sales page and that's your inspiration which you can use instead of just having to start from scratch these are the top ddc brands of the world uh, which is just a free resource we made available for everybody so hopefully this was useful guys i uh, appreciate it uh, if you stayed so far and we'll see you in the next one